experience today at the summit. So how is everything? How is everything in your in your world? Well, going pretty good. I actually did uh-huh. go to a very interesting summit tonight. A- and it was the basically was done by the University of South Florida. They have a program that's actually in AI and they've partnered with the government to sort of help build the next AI individuals to help with every different aspects of the federal government. And this part of the conversation was a sort of a global initiative where there was actually people from around the world. I saw people from France, Germany, and some individuals from, I think, Australia were there also. And they were talking about AI and the ethics behind it, but what is sort of what's being used from different aspects of the military itself. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. And so what was the highlight of the day? Well, let me do is I actually have put something together and I have to give a shout out to my favorite friend today oh. is Copilot by Microsoft. <laughs> so basically it helped me sort of transform this PowerPoint presentation because I just finished up the conference for the day and ran back to my office to sort of put this together. But basically, looking at the impact of AI and then what's going on with AI and the U.S. Navy itself. And what was fascinating about this, Juwan, is that it was sort of looking at how can AI help keep America safe with such a big geography of territory to actually look at to sort of figure out who are the bad actors and who are you know not the bad actors itself. And they were just going through a couple things. And when they were talking, Juwan, you know, we're in the business world. And of course, we always have to talk about ROI. How often do you have to talk about ROI in your job? I talk about ROI quite often. ROI as well as TCO. And so those are two two of the hot topics, especially in, in the sales world. To show the value. That is, it's so true. And that was mentioned a couple times with this admiral um, at CENTCOM. And basically what CENTCOM is, is sort of this central command based in Tampa. And they really manage all the operations, sort of the Europe and the Middle East. And so for all the wars and things like that that's been happening, most of those operations, everybody thinks it comes out of Pentagon. But um, a lot of the operations is actually occurs here in Tampa, Florida itself. And they were talking about how they're using AI in multiple ways is collecting of data and the enormous amount of data that's being collected and how the federal government with President Biden sort of did the executive order for AI, which really The nice thing about that particular executive order is sort of getting all the different organizations within the federal government to start talking to each other. And they never really, everybody had their own systems. I bet you have run across that with companies you've been working with, haven't you? Yeah. So, so basically what you're telling me is they're looking to eliminate silos and standardize on some sort of communication ecosystem so it's more centralized? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what they're trying to do as best they can, as you know. I've worked in the federal government and sold to it, and it is definitely siloed. It it will probably be something that I'll probably never see in my lifetime, but (laughs) that's something they are working toward itself. So one thing they mentioned a couple times also was failing fast. You know, I've worked with startups in the past, and that's sort of the motto. If something doesn't work, let's find out quickly. Yes. yes. And then see, reiterate and seeing if that would actually occur itself. And and it it was kind of surprising because that's not what I have seen in the past with the federal government. So maybe more on the high level technology, maybe they're doing it, Juwan. I, I would be surprised. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, I mean, what's interesting about this is AI is still relatively new for the everyday person. Uh, the government has, has, ten, has in the past come to, to have a slower adoption of newer technology. So the fact that they're already interested in this technology, they're already considering ways that they can leverage this technology, and that, that, that speaks volumes. They know the significance of not hiding this um, at our expense should our with our competitors having access to it. So, so that's that's been volumes to me. And I'm glad to see that they're they're looking to be 
at the forefront and trailblazers and all of them starting to incorporate this. Yeah. And if you sort of look at the map itself, Juwan, it's, it's amazing sort of how can you cover this much territory? Because you probably have heard in the news about different te- terrorist organizations, some are like Yemen and other places is sort of causing havoc with the tankers. And also something that just came up was they're cutting the internet lines, the fiber optics in the water under, under the, um, like the Red Sea or, uh, and in Arabian Sea. And they're in the, all that traffic, internet traffic is really going to the Middle East, which is causing some headaches for them for sure. And wow. so how do you monitor all this territory? And it's amazing how they, uh, went and described it itself. Well, how, I mean, so how, how, how are they planning to, to do this? And, um, well, this is, it, it was kind of interesting. It's sort of like, Everybody thinks, well, well, let's just build more ships. You know, everybody, every country build more ships. We'll just patrol, but you can build almost all the ships you want. You're still not going to be able to cover this much vast water space itself. So that's where they're using un- drones, unmanned oh, type of things to then capture data itself from that. And which is very interesting to sort of see how it's going about doing that. And so finding this, these bad actors, Juwan, is that it was kind of simple. So, okay, you have unmanned vehicle, um, drones flying all over the ocean all the time. So what's sort of the logic? And they sort of went through the logic. Okay, I'm scanned all this video. What am I going to do with the, all this video? Well, first, is do you see boat? No boat. <laughs> so if it's no boat, then don't, don't worry about looking at it. So you train the AI. Okay. If it's a boat, then, um, okay. Is it a tanker or is it a regular boat, a different type, like a cruise line? Well, if it's one and not one of those, then it, what kind of boat it is. And then it sort of does the AI sort of deduces this back and forth all the time to try to figure out exactly what's going on. And then they're using this type of information to know where the, the, where it is and then where it goes back to so they can sort of trace back where these individuals are coming. It seems like something out of a movie. Um, and you send these drones <laughs> out over the waters, scanning and patrolling the waters to, see, to detect any unknown objects and then... Um, bring that information back, but you really don't need to bring the information back. You can still hover above it, I would suppose, and keep eyes on the target or whatever the un- unknown object is. So it definitely seems like something straight out of a movie. Yeah, because the Navy um did this Task Force 59, which I didn't know about until this particular conference, is about leveraging these technologies to monitor this vast amount of areas. And they're doing it, of course, in the ocean. But then also that they are doing this, uh, in over land itself. And actually they <laughs> using, uh, it was interesting. Was, uh, they were telling us in Ukraine, they have an app that they have, um, had where people who live in the area, especially in the war zone area. Juwan, you will laugh when you hear this <laughs> is, is that. Anytime they see a drone, everybody says, okay, they, and they will just say, open this app up and hit, I'm seeing a drone. It knows where you are. And then if everybody in a general vicinity is doing the exact same thing, then it can pinpoint where the drone is. So then they could have potential for shooting it down. Wow. So, so they're leveraging that sort of technology to detect and, and pinpoint where those drones are. Um, right. That's now. Are they shooting it down from the ground, or or do they have drones of their own that they deploy <laughs> to shoot those things down? I think they have a probably a little combination of both. I they didn't go into it too deep in that particular space during because it was only an hour, but it was kind of fascinating because that's sort of low tech AI. You know, you're using user data to then go up and then that AI is then trying to pinpoint exactly where 
that particular location is. Makes sense. And the fact of the matter is they're, they're leveraging the human element with, with the technology from an app base to help pinpoint and track those down. And then they're going out and they're shooting them down. I mean, so on the flip side, I mean, it's pretty safe for, um, for the attacker as well, because now, I mean, that's unknown. So even though it's getting shot down, it's just, they're just losing intelligence, not a natural body. That's where some of the bad actors are using these unmanned ones, you know, where the military, I think three individual military people got were killed, I think it was last month, maybe two months ago. And basically, it's an unmanned uh, drone that was made probably with a 3D printer and then uh, loaded with um, explosives on it. And these yeah. type of drones don't come back. They just have one way mission and it's just come and just, um, and make an impact. Okay. Yeah. And that, 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 that's a problem as well. I mean, and who to say that they won't start doing more? I mean, at the end of the day, you're not, they're, they're not losing lives that, you know, mission completed on earth and it's still, uh, it's, it's still a, a major concern that they would want to do those things though. Uh, but it's a tactic. Yeah, and it, it is quite interesting. And what was, they were very clear that they leverage AI uh, in sort of g- gathering the data and helping making sure things are on track. But to actually do a strike, it still has to be approved by a human. And that's never going to change from air, you know, from the U.S. government, NATO, and other, um, you know, countries around the world. There's some countries that, hey, they don't see it that way, and they just want that, as you said, a kamikaze uh, type of drone that actually uh, does that. Well, I mean, nothing to me is impossible at this point. Nothing's on the table. These, I know we're constantly saying we need human interaction. But at the end of the day, these are, um, they're, they're intelligent. They're, they're learning. They're learning modules, they're constantly learning. I've seen the movie I Robots. And so for, for someone like myself, that robot learned it. And, and who would you say we won't have a bad apple amongst technology itself? I'm just saying, the possibility. And, um, and it takes matters into its own hands. So is that, is that not a concern that, that the, um, the nations will have? Well, they always try to put in those fail safes where it, the drone or any a, autonomous type of AI programming that they, as, as working with the federal government for many years I've done is that there are so many rules and regulations that you have to follow. It's not just like somebody that can just do stuff on the side and, um, and, you know, use a kamikaze type of drone they have a lot of strict protocols and they really have tried my understanding of course as you know is what you are told versus what's done sometimes is totally different but they said they have a lot of fail safes and even time if you're doing a mission that mission has a purpose and it's already had scouted information advanced even if you have a drone that you're trying to strike somebody with itself or a missile. It's, it's advanced technology. But I, I do, I mean, to, to bring this back around, so the unmanned systems are enhancing the Navy's ability to strategically um, um, monitor in the Middle East. So, I mean, so what are some of the potential risks associated with this? Well, there's, believe it or not, a lot of um, technology that we're using today was developed by the DOD. Your iPhone that, you know, right. I use every day was developed in the DOD. And, of course, we know about sort of the Internet was developed sort of in that DOD space um, just so they can communicate back and forth at high speeds itself. Um, but... It was one of those things that it, I, I found what I really had a pivot point for me for this was especially when they were talking about, and a purpose of their particular uh, show is educating the public on how to use AI in their work life and or their personal life. And it was no different. They started with Project Maven, which it was the first big project AI 
initiative that they had started about, they said about eight years ago. And mm-hmm. this particular project was, is having people from politicians to people in the operation side, you know, the foot soldiers saying this is never going to work. It's going to create more work than just doing it manually. How many times have you heard that in uh, uh, teaching technology? Uh, I've heard it a lot. I mean, and and, and sometimes that's the case, but it does, it does in the long term eventually pan out to be a cost saving. From what I'm, and it, this is what really stood out when he said this um, is uh, not just technology, but it's culture, culture of the organization. And we've all been in organizations in our careers that when there is change, and I have to admit, sometimes it's been difficult for me for change at times, is that how you explain it, but give it a, a runway that is not like cramming it down people's yes, throat and everything. Exactly. I mean, but then, and so the chain management process, and that's something I focus a lot on. I mean, the adoption of anything, it takes time. And that's why I just said earlier, um, over a period of time, if you if you map it out correctly, you will get the adoption you're looking for. You have to revisit it. You have to continuously educate and think of nature. But change management, because people, people do not really like change. We're creatures right. of habit. <laughs> so, and so this is, this is huge. Yeah. And I found it very interesting because it was, you know, how do you change the culture of the DOD and the massiveness? And then just think of all the different federal departments, uh, because the federal government, as you know, is the largest employer in the country. And how this is going to ch- change how things are done within the government is just amazing itself. I mean, we're already taking the first step. Like you said, they're looking to leverage this technology to break up silos. To me, that that's huge. They're, they're looking to incorporate AI. And I personally, as a, I personally think it's still this infancy stage. We still have to bet out a lot at this point. But right. the fact of the matter is, with it being in its infancy stages, and we're already um, I'm focusing on that within our government, that's big to me. So kudos again, my hats off to them for, for taking that that step. Absolutely, and I agree with you. And the human element is it's a complex environment, whether you're in the warfighter in the front lines of, you know, protecting the United States or you you are the forefront and different aspects of different jobs that you do itself. The human element of AI is not at this point been able to sort of think in complexity and nuance. And it, that's where I think the beauty of AI and that's where I think potentially AI could be more an enhancement to life than a drawback. What do you think? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've had many debating sessions on that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more so on, um, let's let this take its course before I, before I make my decision on, on, right. on whether it's going to be truly what they're saying it's going to be. Cause to that point, it could still have turned out to be a, a major hindrance. Of course, we just don't know yet. There's a lot of unknowns there for me. So, absolutely. Well, Juwan, this is our first stream. I know we are going to be providing more information to the community out there, but we're looking forward to growing the our online presence and sharing this information. And please. Feel free to make comments and, of course, you know, subscribe to our channel. And we will do is try to bring you topics that are relevant, that you want to hear, or even subjects that you you never heard about. We'll be more glad to either go to a conference or, you know, bring guests on to sort of, you know, explain different things because um, AI is changing every aspect of uh, the world. And there's a lot of people around the world are leveraging AI to improve their life. Any final thoughts, Juwan? Subscribe to the channel. 
Give us a quick like, leave a comment. We'd appreciate it all. And I'll leave on that note. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you.